here I am again getting ready to create some content for the distributed web. This time I'm going to be using a system called DAT, D-A-T, and uh, we'll take it from beginning to end. Not sure how this will go, but uh, this is it. So first of all, DAT uh, on uh, my machine and where I'll, I'll also be uh, installing it remotely. It runs on Node. Node is basically a JavaScript server application. Uh, so basically all we need to think about here is that we need Node installed before we install DAT. So uh, very quickly, DAT itself is a way of installing not just files but data to the uh, distributed web. So you can think of it as you know a, a distributed alternative to things like Dropbox or GitHub or whatever, which use centralized services. DAT uses a distributed services and a distributed network. It also makes it easy to save old versions of files. Every time you update, it'll automatically track your changes. So, there we are. It's created by the, uh, or funded by the Code for Science and Society, and it's maintained under GitHub. But, okay. So, as I say, it runs under Node. So, Node is an application that can run on Linux or run on Windows. So, you just uh, search on Google for install node on Windows and it'll tell you a little bit about it. Run, download the installer, run the installer, and that's basically it. Uh, I've already installed it here on my desktop so I don't need to install it again. So once you've got that done, the next thing to do is to start up Windows PowerShell, uh, you might have to run as administrator, maybe not. I just generally just run PowerShell. So here's Windows PowerShell. And to install DAT, now I'm going to follow the instructions that are on the DAT website. Uh, that URL here, um, I'm, I'll just make a, a big version of it for you. Here it comes, <laughs> and let's make it big. So now you can see it, docs.datproject.org slash intro. I'll leave that on the screen there for a second or two for you. All right. Or you can just stop the video and write it down. Okay. so. Um, so I'm going to click on installation. So um, interesting. It says Windows coming soon. That's that's just oh I see. That's just for the desktop application. We have to use the terminal. As I say, we use the PowerShell. Um, so let's do that. Um, So here's our PowerShell. First of all, we'll check that node is installed correctly. So node and then hyphen V for version 6.4.0. That's not very recent, is it? <laughs> but it only requires node version 4 or higher, so we're good. Uh, and then we run the command uh, npm node package manager install hyphen g for i don't know what and that and it's going to do its thing here now i tested this earlier so i actually already have it installed but so i'm basically reinstalling it over the old uh, installation i thought it might go a lot faster that way i was wrong so Basically what we're doing here is 
uh, dat will run as oh it, I was right it did install pretty quickly because like I said I had already installed it um, so uh, typically you'd see more on your thing but but just type that command and it'll install so the next thing to do uh, you, know, you might see output like this um, or not what we didn't get is an error so we're good that really was it so we'll go on to the next page to start sharing data so um, so downloading data so what we'll do is uh, we're gonna clone somebody else's data so dat is a command line application so I can just type dat clone and then should recognize this already as a dat address and then this is the hash and then this will be the subdirectory that we're going to get from that hash uh, so that hash is the address of a remote site so I'm just going to copy this right from the page copy and we'll go into this now this might not work and the reason why it might not work is that the uh, distributed network might not be supporting this anymore uh, it might not be on the distributed network maybe the server uh, that had it on was stopped or you know maybe just nobody's hosting it anymore or maybe it is we'll see let's find out together click enter or hit enter so now it's going into the distributed web in invalid storage path. So, hmm. so let, let's try it without the, the downloads stuff and see what that says. Connecting to DAT network. So it's connecting to the network. Yeah, okay, so it didn't like the storage path. So what happened is uh, at that site, which is indicated by that hash, um, they've changed their directories around. Who knows how, right? Um, so uh, we got an invalid storage path. So what I did is I said, well, let's not worry about the directories. Um, let's just download everything and so <laughs> download zero bytes control C to exit Oops. and it seemed to be stalled here or maybe it's just trying trying to download see that that's what should be happening Oh, okay. They did it a bit different. Okay, well, let's. Can, can I still. It won't let me control C to exit here. That's my problem. There we go. It, it, it allowed me. So, if we look at this demo, it's just all of that and then just demo. So, I don't know why this is different from what we see on the screen, but let's try that. D-E-M-O, see just like what we saw here, and now we'll hit enter, and let's see what that does, oh that's much better, so okay, downloading updates, we actually did see it do some downloading, <coughs> and all right, so now what? I have no idea why that just closed like that. <coughs> okay, and right, we can also view the files online. Let's let's try that and see what we see. The page we seek does not exist. So let's try this. No.
So that page in the documentation does not exist. I wonder what would happen if I just tried. Oh, I did that. Let's try. Let's try demo. I, it probably won't work either, but yes, this is what you have to do sometimes, right? You just have to try different things. No, this page still doesn't exist. So, okay. Try that. Oh, that'll probably take us back to the instructions. Install. Okay. Oh, maybe these are more up-to-date instructions. How about that? Uh, so install, and we've installed that, just like I said before. So that should still work. Move on to the good stuff. So if you're wondering where this link is, <laughs> uh, it's https trydat.com. This, this looks like a much better link already certainly looks newer so okay let's go so let's move on to the good stuff as it says so let's share some data we're going to start by using dat to share a folder so what i'm going to share what do i want to share well let, let's follow what they say and create a folder on my desktop called dat test I will put a couple of things into it. So just pop this up. It's okay. New folder. I'll call it that test. Here it is. And now we just want to drag a few things into it. So uh, Windows. How about that? It's just going to sit there and spin for a moment. Uh, so let's throw in, uh, see we have some presentations here. <laughs> let's throw the NRC vision in. Yeah, how about that? Uh, that's, that's a nice little presentation. Um, Oh, I didn't mean to move it. I just wanted to copy it. So, copy and paste it back in here. Yeah, so, nice little presentation uh, with the uh, main elements of the National Research Council vision. So, it's kind of neat. I made this. They they made the vision and I made the slides because I thought it was a good vision. And of course, I made the slides bilingual because we're Canadian. All right. So uh, that's what we're going to load into that. So okay. Uh, so. So we'll go to that directory. So let's come back to PowerShell. Control C to exit. Again. Oops, don't let me. Come on, silly thing. There we go. All right. So we're going to go to that directory. share it. How, how hard is it? That share. We are now sharing this directory on the distributed web. Here's the URL or here's not the URL, the, the datl. I don't know what we call those. The address. So this hash is our address. So behind the scenes, DAT created a hidden folder called .dat in our test folder. 
the appearance of the dat folder means that everything in this directory can now be versioned with dat so here it is i show hidden folders on my system so there's the dat folder and we'll, we'll, let's pop into it and see what's in here so you see metadata bit field content tree uh, signatures all the stuff you need for uh, a distributed web application okay so as long as the dat share process stays open so you see it's staying open here control c to exit uh, my data will be available via the global dat decentralized network to anyone who has the link. The link is secret and unguessable. Well, unguessable is, you know, I mean, here's the link. You could guess it, but it would be a one in almost infinity chance of getting it right. <laughs> Uh, but but technically it is guessable. It's just not practically guessable. Okay, so um, so for now, suppose we want to download this. First, copy the dat link from the source terminal. Windows users beware. Use right click as Control C will quit dat. So yeah, so. Here I've highlighted it. I'm going to, I'm going to right click. That copies it in PowerShell. So it's a bit tricky to get used to sometimes. All right. So, all right. So now we've got the link. Uh, so we'll have to open up a second terminal. We'll call it the destination terminal. So here we go. Second terminal. And. So what we need to do now is move to a directory where we'd like to move these files. So let's uh, make another directory. Uh, we'll call it um, drop, drop that. Sure, why not? Uh, okay. So. And now we'll go to that directory. Okay, nothing in. Hands are empty. <laughs> now, dat clone and then followed by the link. So, dat clone and then right click again to paste. a folder name like try dat so that's where it's going to go I guess uh, and we need to make sure there's a space here and then we'll hit enter to make this thing run command run now so should connect me to the network downloading and we've downloaded it so let's see there's our directory we'll go into that directory and there's our file so we've obtained our file from the distributed web um, and then on the source the original one we can type control C to stop running that. But let's move on because this is exciting. Editing and sharing data. Now we have a file, right? What happens if the contents of the files change? Let's find out. On the source, see I didn't shut it down, right? So here's the source. We'll create a new file called welcome.txt and open it in our favorite text editor. So, let's see. 
let's do that. So I'm going to use Note tab, which is my favorite text editor. File, new, and now I'll save this. Save as. Um, so that was dropped at, and the other one was what, what, what did I call it? I forgot what I called it. <laughs> dot test. There it is. Okay, yeah, all right. So so let, let's call this welcome.txt. So I'm saving it. Now let's give it some content. All right, so now I've made an addition to my, uh, oops, that's not it. dot test there it is okay so there's the file I've just created in my dot test directory let's come back to the instructions now so um, now I go back here and I'll type dot share again which I probably don't have to yeah okay yeah it was watching for file updates such file or directory okay so it kind of crashed when I just loaded it so let's go with that share okay so now I'm sharing two files um, might just be because I had the file open in that directory okay so sharing the new dat Okay, now let's go to the destination one. Remember that? That was where I had the other one. So here it is. Um, so this is my destination. Tr um, drop dat uh, backslash try dat. So, um, and now I'll run dat sync in this destination folder. That sync. So now it's going to be syncing. And now it's synced and waiting for updates. So let, let's pop into it here. Um, Drop dat. Try dat. See, now the welcome text has come in as well. Exactly what we wanted to happen. So, check the file on both sides, they should match. Well, let's open it up and uh, see. And yes, it is. This is pretty nice. Eh? Okay, next. So, currently you're running DAT on both the source and at your destination. Let's just check and make sure that's true. <laughs> so, all right, here is the source. So just sharing, right? This is where we type share dat. It's the one that crashed earlier. And here's the destination. And okay. And you see they both say control C to exit. So alright, we're running on both. Awesome. 
So let's come back. All right. What happens if you make changes to the source file while your destination is watching? So on the source side, edit the welcome. Edit it rapidly. <laughs> Uh, changing after each exit. All right, so let's do that. So here I am. So I will edit it rapidly. So revision one and saving each time, just like it said, revision two. And I'll save that. Oh. Process can't because it's being used by another process. <laughs> oh, isn't that interesting? Right. So that's an unexpected glitch. Since this is tiny text, next time the updates will download real fast. So, yeah, if I could save them. Um, it, it appears that this one, it's, it's locked. Um, add, add, watching for file updates, add, add. close and let's try to this is the receiving directory right so let's come back to the source oh I know what I can do let's let's do it this let, let's just skip windows entirely here and yes we'll close without saving changes to close this entirely all right so in the source I see I can also edit it oh but I can't edit it because it's running let's open up another window and we'll go to dat test and here's our files now let's vi welcome txt VI is uh, an editing application. So here we go. Yeah, it took revision one and then that's it, right? So let's make revision two. Okay. And then let's write it. And it popped me out. Yeah. In. Okay, at least it took the. Okay, so let's try editing again. Revision three. So, VI is a really handy editor to have. It's a bit awkward to use. You type VI in the file name they're in. Now, if I want to add some text, I type the letter A. You see how it says insert down there at the bottom, right? Now I can insert. Okay, and then when I'm done inserting, I'll hit escape. And now, so now I'm not in the insert mode anymore, but I'm not really in any kind of mode. If I want to save the file, I need to execute the command. So the colon, I typed colon, you see a, to a colon appeared at the bottom, and then write is for write, and Q is for quit. So colon WQ, pretty standard. And so that finishes it, and there we go. So let's have a look at what happened over here. Uh, well, nothing really. Uh, what's happened over here? Doesn't look like a whole lot happened. All right, but we've done what we were instructed to do. 
So, okay. Um, okay, we didn't even see the, okay, it's watching for file updates. The live file will sync to your machine as you save. Isn't that cool? Uh, well, I didn't really see that happening. Um, but, oh well, yeah, here we go. That's down four files now. So it actually did do stuff. It's just it does stuff and then it kind of goes away. I wonder, I'm going to try editing. I will just watch and see if anything happens in that right hand. So this is where I'm editing and this is, so I'm editing here on the source and this is the destination. So This is where I'm editing in the source. Oh yeah, here we go. So here I am. So type A for add. Revision 5. Escape. Colon. WQ. And yeah, I didn't really see anything happening on the right hand side either. Eh? Well, let's see if anything has actually changed in here. So here we are. I'm just going to refresh it. Same number of files, which is what I expect. Let's open up welcome.txt and see if it synced live. And it did not. So, okay, that's kind of what we expected. So for some reason, it didn't live sync. Um, my guess is that it has something to do with the Windows locking business there that we had. But uh, I don't know. If we open it up, or maybe it just failed to just. Let's let's go to the uh, the source. This is the source. And yeah, see the source worked okay. So don't know why we're not syncing over here. Or maybe it's just syncing very slowly. I don't know. Or maybe there's something about my machine that won't allow it to sync very rapidly. Hmm. Well, it's a puzzle. Don't you love this stuff? All right, well, let's, uh, okay, so this is the source. So I'm going to do a control C. Huh. So that did something. Let's come here. This is the destination. I'm going to do a control C here. Nothing. Nothing. Control C. Now it's downloading three files and let's see what we got. So this is the uh, the destination. Let's open it up and so here's our revised updated version. So it works, it just didn't work automatically. So I don't know why it didn't work automatically. It might have something to do with this is Windows 7 or it might have something to do with I'm running this on my office desktop and I probably shouldn't. 
who knows let's move on so uh, did not live sync so it wasn't cool um, hosting a website is next okay so we've covered sharing syncing and live syncing of data but what about sharing via the web so let's create a file called index using the command touch okay so what touch does is um, it basically it creates the file but it doesn't put any content into it so basically you're, you're touching it and that makes it exist but that's it all right so okay, I've stopped it on both sides here so touch index HTML or HTML probably doesn't matter but HTML okay, HTML so and if we look and see we've created it but there's nothing inside it all right so that's cool so and now we're going to uh, use the test editor, I think they mean text editor, to create the new file. I'm just going to copy this because I'm super lazy. There's a silly template to get started. All right. And so let's go back into here. This is where I did it. So. I don't know why I had to touch and then, well, whatever. So let's, let's uh, edit it again. Again, I'm just going to use VI. You should be able to use any text editor, um, but who knows? But VI will work for me. It's command line. It's old school, but... But I should should be able to use Note Tab or Notepad or whatever. So, oops, that was a mistake. Uh, okay, when you make a mistake in VI, Escape colon capital Q exclamation mark. Oops, let's try that again. Colon Escape colon Q exclamation mark, and we're up. Now let's do that again. See, I escape without saving is what we did here. So, um, add, hit the A, and now I'll, I'll add all of my content. There's all my content. Escape, colon, WQ. All right. So now we're going to share again, but slightly differently from before. So, dat share hyphen hyphen HTTP equals 8080. So what this is doing is it's creating a web accessible version of my distributed resource file. Now we're getting into some pretty cool stuff here. So let's do that. That share and now it should be up and running. Okay, and see we're, we've uploaded our file one connection up there to the world watching for file updates because that's what it does here we are over here as well um, and uh, don't know if we did anything doesn't look doesn't look like we're really syncing on the receiving end very well at all looks like we're doing okay on the uploading but not syncing on the receiving end not automatically anyways all right so check out your new website at http localhost 8080 and nothing so okay. let's copy it and let's create a new browser and then hit enter Welcome to, and this is the website that I just created. If we look 
at uh, look at the content that we put in right so here here it is right welcome to my data website cat picture rickroll so I am, I'm so tempted to sing right now but I'm not gonna sing right now but I really want to sing right now uh, <laughs> so I have a resource being shared on the distributed web I can access it via localhost of course being able to access it on my own computer isn't that useful so when I modify the site will update when I refresh the browser window so let's test that because they can say things but as we've learned already we don't necessarily trust what they've said so let's so this is uh, index.html right so index.html so here it is so to type a to add updated all right escape colon wq all right so i've updated it let's see and it is updated so wonderful so dat operates as a web server as well as um, a node in the distributed web this really is perfect for me anyways so let's go back and see what's next so downloading a partial data set from git now things are going to get complicated so here's an example of hosting code on github that includes a link to a dat data set it contains a dat.json file which contains a dat link for the data set as well as other metadata about these data okay so in order to make this work you have to have git on your machine git is the uh, the file management uh, application that connects your machine to github so uh, well or to any git repository but github is the most common one now i have git on my machine um, but if you don't you'll have to go install that so clone to clone the repository so we type the following in our local terminal so let's do that um, all right it's a bit it's a bit opaque here everything to do with git by the way is opaque so the author has included a dat download file which specifies which files the user will download by default otherwise they'd all be downloaded by default upon dat cloning this repository where we don't necessarily want to do that <coughs> so git clone this okay all right so let's do that let's go here into my local terminal so again where am i always a good idea to check where am i i'm in dat test right so that's my original source location so i'm going to um, clone this repository so there it is again this is a command and if you're on a windows system or even on a linux system sometimes you have to install git to make this work first now i'll hit enter enter oh come on there we go and so it's going to clone into this subdirectory for me and that didn't take very long so see here's the uh, subdirectory you can tell it's a directory by the d there and uh, if we want the uh, the existing uh, you know the, the normal thing 
So here's the new subdirectory that we just saved. This is what it looks like. That git is information for git. The program, here's the dat download file that they referred to, dat json. Let's pop them, hop into here and see what it looks like. So name cat mapper <laughs> URL. So this is kind of neat. I'm just going to stop here. Let's grab this URL, copy, and let's fire up. You remember I had Beaker Browser running the other day. So I'm just curious. This is not in the instructions, but I'm just curious to see. I mean, nothing happened when I went to start Beaker. Oh, it looks like Beaker crashed. Okay. So here's Beaker Browser, and let's paste that, oh, it's not in there, paste it into the address bar, so not there, in here. I didn't realize Beaker has a search, and let's see if this does anything for us. So what I'm trying to do here is retrieve whatever this is directly from the uh, distributed web. I said whatever this is. I hope it's nothing bad. Pretty sure it isn't. Might even just be a rickrolling thing again. So you know, and what we're experiencing here is one of the problems so far with the distributed web, and that is that it can be kind of slow. See, and nobody is sharing this site right now. So let's put this off to one side. We might come back to it here. All right. So. Uh, okay. So let's, let's go back to our instructions. All right. So we've got it. It includes text and code files, but none of the data files. Check index. To see the pictures that are missing. All right, so what they want us to do is open index.html. So this one, and see what pictures are missing. And then, so let's open this. Okay, so. All right, that's not what I meant to do. So let's open this uh, with a text browser. Okay, so these are the images, cat1, cat2. Notice too, right, we don't have a full URL here. Um, we only have the, the image name itself. That's because if we put a full URL here, like we can't know ahead of time what the uh, hash code is going to be. We don't know what the address will be. So we can only define the URL relative to the directory where it's located. All right, so that's fine. So now what we want to do is get those files. So first of all, we get the data dat clone to get the dat metadata. Okay. Let's just check that dat metadata. I'm just curious to see what we're looking at here. Well, well this is the dat metadata. Now, if nobody's sharing this, that might be a problem. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. Um, so, like that. Hmm. Didn't copy properly. Let's go back to the page. Dat clone empty. Copy. And now I'm going to use a right click to paste it. There we go. So this should basically key, re key required to clone. Okay. So let's 
let's do this cat dot clone dot get example see if that does anything better for us and connecting to the dot network now again nobody's sharing this file so we might not be in luck here Just do here. This is something else. Connecting to the DAT network still. <laughs> Told you this was opaque. So this might not actually work. Um, I'm gonna control C that now this here is our uh, this is our drop dat area. Downloading updates. I wonder what we've got here. So here we are, right? This is the drop dat and then the directory in it. Let's see what's in here now. Refresh. And see, see I'm not seeing any of the stuff that we've uploaded. So again, things aren't working automatically the way they should. There's no good reason why. I'm going to control exit here, control C to exit here, and as usual I have to hit it a bunch of times because that's the way it works. You have to hit it. You actually have to hit control C twice to exit these programs. So, all right. Um, so, I'm going to hit control C here too. Now. Let's try this again. That clone empty. It still requires that. Let's try with the directory again. And over here, I'm going to run the, the dat share command. some stuff that was interesting that should still work yeah I don't see any new files added here either not everything works the way we want it to work does it You can just imagine somebody who knows what they're doing who's <laughs> actually running, you know, who knows what they're doing and sees me running this and says, oh yeah, look at that obvious mistake that he's made. So, well, let's come back here. Um, I wonder, did we at least get anything and try that. Yeah, here's the example. It did come in. 
and here's the index file, etc. So, what was it? That git example. So, uh, use that to download the pictures. Well, I'd love to, <laughs> nobody's sharing them. And that, that's probably what our problem is. So let's shrug and move on to the next thing. Let's try this last thing here. Let's exit this. So now this is my source still. I'm going to try dat sync and see if that doesn't somehow pull these files from where I want them to be pulled from. Connecting to that network again, it looks like it might just hang because nobody's sharing it. See, here's a lesson for people who create demos with the distributed web make sure there's at least one node running that is actually hosting your demo because you know the distributed web isn't big yet. All right, next. Extra credit, host your site in Beaker. Okay. Beaker is a browser built on DAT. It's fun to play with. Blah, da, 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 install. We did that already. So, simply type the DAT link generated by DAT share into the Beaker address bar. So, uh, let's kill this because it wasn't working anyways. Control X. Or no, Control C. All right, so that share should generate my nice long link. Now, now I didn't put the HTTPS in here. I don't know if that'll matter. But now let's bring Beaker back over. So here's Beaker again. And I'm going to type in the new link. It didn't go in. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I don't know. Uh, let's come back here. Highlight it. So it ends with 0B5. So right click to copy. And then Control V to paste. 0B5. Okay, good. I'll hit enter. Look at that. So I'm using the Beaker browser with a DAT link to view my updated website. So that was my extra credit. That was pretty easy, actually. Um, if you've added an index file. Okay. Well, mine didn't look like that. Oh, well, okay, the sizing was different, that's all. Right. Oh, no, the cat's gone. Didn't I used to have a cat? Hmm. I still have the Rickroll. <laughs> Try reloading it. Maybe it just didn't load. No. Well, I'm very disappointed. Let's try to open the image in a new tab. File not found.
wasn't found. Looks like my other file isn't here either. My uh, For some reason, I'm not able to get the images. Well, I got the images. I guess I'm getting the image from the original site, but yeah, that's pretty wild. And then sites on the beaker. That should be index, not HTML. So, see, you can send the dat link to a friend, they can fork. This is really important. You can send the dat link to a friend and they can fork and edit their version on their site. So, okay, next. Extra credit, distributing scientific data. So, here's some scientific data. So... you have the data files in a folder on your machine, simply run dat create in the folder to start tracking the data with dat. So, okay. Uh, well, this is just a regular HTML link. Uh, well, this is not simple. This is maybe better to work with because this will this should just be a JSON file. Yeah, it is perfect. Now we saw this back in the first unit in the course, so I'm going to save this into a folder in my machine. So I'm going to right click, save it, and I should get in a few seconds because it's Windows. When is this going to pop up? Works JSON so. Let's go in here, let's go into my dat test again, and I'll create a new folder called data. Go into the folder, and we'll save works.json in here. All right, so, not beaker, I don't want beaker. Let's go back here, control C to exit. Here's my new directory data. We'll go into that directory. Okay, and now we'll type dat create. That's going to create this now as a brand new um, thing. We'll walk you through a dat.json file. So, title, um, it's called works, description. Test data set. Now you can add files and share. So you see, see how this is a bit different, right? Uh, I needed to create a header for my data, I guess. So let, let's take a look and see what was created. So there's the folder I created. So here's the works.json that I downloaded. This is the dat.json I just created. Now if we open it up, the title is works, the description, and now here's the URL. I'm going to copy that because before doing anything, like say reading instructions, I'm going to see if I can open that in Beaker Browser because you never know, maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what I got. Maybe nothing, because I'm not sure I'm sharing it yet. I, I might not be sharing it. Yeah, so let's stop that. 
that. And I'll bet you the instructions tell me to share it next, right? All right, run dot share. And then we'll share the link with an attendee. Though there is no other workshop attendee, but you get the idea. So let's go back here. We'll type dat share. And okay. Now it should work in Beaker. And there it is, dat.json and works.json. Expected more content. See version the latest. Hmm. Uh, there's nothing in here yet. Maybe it's still loading. Maybe it's not sharing because I have it open in something else. It, it's hard to tell with Windows. With Linux, a lot of this stuff's a lot more straightforward. But with Linux, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Sharing data to files. Oh, well, that should have shared just fine. Maybe I just tried to read it too quickly. Let's, let's reload this and see what we get. Oh, let's try reloading the whole thing. Right. That came through fine. But for some reason, works did not. And I don't know why it did not. Um, it actually keeps trying to open putty. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of weird. That might be completely, I might just be clicking, because that's the link to Putty right there. I might just be clicking on it by accident. So, where's the last? So, not perfect yet. I'm not sure what's happened here. Pretty sure I still have the file properly on my website, but let's just check on my website. That site? I don't know what you call it. So, data works. Oh, there's nothing in here. Well, that would explain that. Maybe there was. So, say, let's save this again. It's works.json. Yes, I want to replace it. Because, <laughs> see, this is what it should look like. Right? Um... It's just not saving. That's my problem. Why wouldn't it save? Now what kind of weird deal is this? <laughs> okay. 
Now we got some data in it. I don't know why it didn't save before. Now, oops. Um, this should still be sharing. Let's see. So, so okay, there we go. Dat dot JSON. There it is, like before. Works.json, still nothing, right? Because it's not automatically updating, just like before. So, Control C to exit. It's hmm, adding works.json of zero from somewhere. <laughs> so, I'm thinking that out there in the world, uh, the source of this works.json it's it's been zeroed Zero. oh no we're still at five okay let's try dat share again okay here's the URL not really a URL, I know. And it ends 14C, uh, which is what it's been ending all along. Maybe I've just been accessing the wrong site again. Yeah, I don't know, 14C plus 4. Hell yeah. All right, 14C. Hit enter. There's my files, dat.json, works.json, there's my works, and yes, I have my data. Okay, so uh, that, this is probably, I think that might have been the, uh, the last of the instruction here. Um, okay, next for credit desktop application <laughs> uh, for Mac or Linux right okay that doesn't exist yet for us uh, extra credit import genomic data with the JavaScript API okay yeah right okay I, I know why we need this so So we're going to create a new folder. Now this is something. Bio node NCBI. All right. So I don't know what this is, but all right. So we're going to come back. Create a new folder. So um, let's just kill all this stuff. I wonder if this ever did sync for us. I'm kind of curious now. Try that. Refresh. Nope. Nah, it never did. But if I did. I'm just trying to sync it. See that? Should have synced it now. Activate example. Jason. 
Yeah, no, I don't see works in there anywhere. So, this, this whole automatic syncing thing, maybe not ready for prime time. All right, so let's exit to that program. Exited, exited, okay, so let's go back up. Oops, did I go too far? Let's see what directory I'm in. Okay, yeah, okay, so make dear influenza. instruction so and now we need to run an npm install so this is node package manager install no g for this one i wonder why it's one of these things if i was more curious i'd look it up and one day it'll matter but, okay so enter so this should download and install some uh, a package for me Comes, right, it's fetching stuff, bunch of stuff. Getting a dry throat talking to you all this time. Hope I'm still recording. I wonder how long this is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm still recording. So that's good. Kind of neat to see. 1280 by 720. It's kind of a big screen for this, but oh well. This is taking a little longer than I would like. It doesn't actually tell me how long my recording is so far. Here we go. See, and this is what it looks like to originally when you install. Um, that remember I installed it and it was like a one-liner because I had already installed it so okay uh, so there's some warnings here but nothing significant okay now we create a script file with the following content so this is just plain JavaScript so script.js so let's do that so, vi as always, script.js. Again, I could use Word or you know, Notepad or Notetab or whatever. A for add. Can't really see me type those letters because they don't show up, right? But right click to paste everything. Escape, colon, wq. All right, so I've created my script. Now run it. The neat thing is Node is JavaScript, right? So obviously that, that's why it keeps doing that. Uh, so Node will run JavaScript scripts for me. So I just type Node script.js and cannot find module dat. Huh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, so why can't it find that? See, bar dat require dat. And it can't find it. Probably because dat is in a directory above where I am, maybe. It's a good guess. Oops. So, what I'm doing here is I'm just saying 
Look for it in the directory above where you are. This might not work. Still can't find it. Okay. That should be findable. See, this is probably part of the reason for my problems. Unable to connect to DAT public server. <laughs> Your network may be preventing you from using DAT. <laughs> so, that might be why some of this stuff isn't working. <laughs> my network is preventing me. Maybe if I tried this from home, I'd be a lot better. But. I'm trying to do this in you know, a government research lab. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> okay. That might be why the sync stuff isn't working and, and the uh, uh, download stuff wasn't working. One of the issues, eh? Doesn't tell me, though, why DAT, why, why the uh, JavaScript couldn't find DAT. These are all the instructions though, that share, create, sync, etc. You know, public peer test, it, yeah, I'll bet you it's blocked. I'll, I'll bet you dollars to donuts it's blocked. I mean, they block really simple stuff here. Um, anything having to do with peer-to-peer -peer networks, they don't like very much, so. All right, so. This is kind of neat. This looks like it was the last thing. So this is where I'm going to end this video. I'm going to do another one um, to introduce uh, care and care packages. Um, but, but I really did want to be able to show this. So I'm going to close this here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of long. I'm sorry. Um, but I wanted you to see the experience of this um, as well as some of the stuff that can go wrong because, you know, this stuff doesn't run necessarily out of the box the way you'd like it to. So um, your results should probably be better than mine. I mean, I'm running in a fairly restricted environment here. You, if you're running from home, you might be doing a lot better. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to close this. The next video, and yes, there will be a next video, will be the uh, actual creation of content or yeah, content addressable resources for education. It's gonna be fun. See you then. I'm Stephen Downs. <laughs>